If you're my age, you cannot deny those parallels. And I wrote, I wrote something in a, in a short, I was, I was staying with my son who was dying of nasal pharyngeal cancer at the beginning, and I was, working, I was living in, Cal, in Washington with my son who was dying of nasal pharyngeal cancer when this person was, began his, his uh, administration. And I was writing a diary to myself on a daily basis. And I put in there, this looks Hitlerian. We are, we are back in the 1930s to 45. If you live then, you realize that. Kids who are going through today, 30 years from now, are going to recognize it when it happens again. And that's the reason, probably the most important part of uh, January 6th. It showed us what can happen if you don't pay attention, if you don't go to the polls. And you also have to realize, last November, this country was saved by black and brown women mm -hmm. who went to the polls in huge numbers, in spite of all the intimidation that they were living with, went to the polls and voted out of place, Mr. Trump. We owe democracy in this country to those black and brown women who have been looked down on for the last 200 years in this country. They saved this democracy. You need to realize that. And you see, if we melanemic women had joined the civil rights movement, that whole thing would have worked and it, we would not be in the shape we're in today. But we didn't join in mass, massive numbers. We, we, we started the women's movement and the women's movement was allowed to succeed because it was a white women's movement and white men supported it because they could use us to keep black people in their place. And it worked beautifully. Women went along to get along. They did not encourage people of women of color to come into the women's movement because we didn't see them as equal citizens, and they were, and more than equal. We should have realized what we were doing, but, and right now, when we've got the Me Too business, let's talk about Me Too. Let's talk about, well, let's not, because we don't have time, but let's talk about the women, let's talk about the Native American women, young girls who disappear, and nobody looks for them, and nobody finds them. Somebody said they found 200 graves just recently, most of them Native American women. What in the devil is going on in this country, and why are those human beings, why are we allowing people to treat them as less than human? Don't talk to me about the women's movement. Let's talk about what could have happened if white women had joined the civil rights movement in massive numbers. What could have happened? And then don't ask people of women of color or anybody of color to, to sympathize with us poor white women who haven't had the rights that we should have had all these years. We have supported the wrong people for a long time because that, that was our education. That was what we were taught to do. In this country, in my estimation, education is not education. We don't leave people out of ignorance. It's indoctrination. We teach people how to be good American citizens. And these are the ways in which you do that. You teach that only white males invented, discovered, enjoyed good things, and the rest of us just followed in their followed in their footsteps, as if none of none of those white men had a mother. Shall we talk about the mothers who produced those those sons who were so famous? I wonder how that happened. Must have been the main. Yeah, I just I just. People can call me any name they want to. You need to realize that, too. <laughs> my dad used to say, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me. He was wrong. Words destroy people all day, every day. And if they didn't, Donald Trump wouldn't have been so upset about the press. He knew the power of the press. He knew the power of media. And now he has been, he is no longer allowed to use he is no longer allowed to Twitter and tweet and whatever it was he was doing. And he is without a voice. Tell me that words don't have power. He is without a voice. So he has all these young, pale males, pale, stale males going out there and doing his job for him. And they know he's wrong. And you know he was wrong. And we all know he was wrong. And now things are going to get better because they can't. We are in a position now. We were in a position where they couldn't get much worse without falling off the edge. So they are going to get better. Now, I mean, you, you, now you can say that's all about politics. You cannot talk about racism without talking about politics.
The two are so closely, in, that they are so interlaced that there's no way you can talk about politics without talking about racism. And get the book, Rich Thanks to Racism. That's the name of it, Rich Thanks to Racism. I think the, the author's name is Freeman. Get the book, Rich Thanks to Racism, and then you'll get a real interesting picture about of charter schools.